Welcome, friends of Dice Never Lie. This is DM Marathustra. Just wanted to thank you all for tuning into this, our session for the Twin Star Marauders. Uh, this is immediately after my recent vacation here. Uh, my Linux system on my main computer had updated, and I lost a lot of things, so we were kind of going on a very bare minimums. Uh, get the session going for my game uh, crew, and... A lot of the digital things, a lot of the resources, a lot of the things that make life uh, nicer in these digital ages uh, was kind of lost and beyond us at that point. Uh, including my laptop that I had taken on vacation uh, was kind of lacking as well, uh, coming back as the recording device. Um, and part of that is indeed because we we're using other sources to manage things like other than that uh but in the long run this is already half of a session uh we're picking up after the break which i feel like was about two and a half hours into the session as is um so this is picking up inside of the temple of the rat god underneath tolis uh well into the session but as always thank you for tuning in thank you for watching these recap sessions Thank you for listening to these recap sessions. Uh, in the long run, part of the goal of everything that we're doing here is to be able to bring more D&D to more people uh, as we transition uh, from pre-made campaigns into Tolis and soon in April debut the homebrew world uh, that I worked a lot to create while on vacation here. Uh, but we're just looking to... Uh, Know, get everything set up and get everything flowing here so again thank you for tuning in hope you enjoy so i don't actually remember where that left us um we're kind of still i think in that decision of a short rest to um continuing forward uh so delton's thinking um uh, because of how much time was already spent before they came in that um, might not be wise to try and take another hour. No guarantee that we'd actually get through an actual rest. So, despite being kind of uh, uh, pretty injured, he's gonna. He would suggest that we press on on our search. Yeah, Wesley will agree to that. Uh, seem uh, well, we took trying to rest and then trying to get another hour in would be like taking too long. Um, so if if Seraph looked for the uh, the footsteps again, are they going back the way we'd already come, or are they continuing on? They seem to be continuing on down to the south, uh, where we haven't been yet, where we had heard the uh, uh, rat things before. Um, I would say it, Seraph can track the footsteps down south into the hall, uh, down to the south of you. Um, and I think it's going to be one of those things where, I mean, there's, there's no simple way to do this without pretty much telling you, um, he's going to lose sight of them somewhere in that hall. You guys can basically expect that there is a secret door that he's not spotting. So I would say, let me get a investigation. Uh, from Wesley and from Dalton to see if the two of you can help him uh, find where these footsteps are leading. That is mm. 19. Seven for Dalton. Seven's not going to quite do it, but the 19 definitely does help. Uh, Wesley can kind of spot as he's kind of like feeling around the edges a uh, little bit of like an uneven nature to the stone and kind of feel like this almost imperceptibly small uh, kind of like roughness in these edges and can kind of spot, um, you know, like a little, I think I described before where there were like, uh, like almost bas relief of like the rat god and like shaking its hand was like the way to kind of like activate the door. Um, and maybe it's kind of the similar thing with these secret doors as well, where there's like actual like rat gods, uh, like all through the stonework 
and it's finding like the right one with like an actuating arm that allows him to kind of bring open and release a door into the east. Um, and you can basically see as Seraph kind of picks up the footsteps from there. Um, but your signs of where Jinx is leads down in this direction. Well spotted, Wesley. Thank you. Wesley will go into that secret. I find um, Oh, sorry. Well, no, what were you saying there? I was going to say, I find kind of funny that the rogue that I decided to like not be very like perceptive and investigating, like he rolls really high on all like perception and investigations. Oh, they're still experts. That's one thing I don't think people recognize with D&D, the way like bounded accuracy and like the D20 math works. There's a lot that you can do to make your guy better at stuff, but it doesn't change the fact that pretty much anybody can do anything at any given time. Uh, so as you kind of progress forward here, uh, are you guys moving stealthfully? Are you still kind of almost trying to uh, like move forward with a little bit of haste? Are we sticking to that same uh, Wesley, Dalton, Seraph? Marching order? Yeah, I'm fine with the marching order. I think Wesley at least would urge the others to like try to hurry up a bit, like wasted enough time. Yeah, Dalton's good with that. Um if Seraph is looking uh, is looking a little better than Dalton is, maybe he would uh if Seraph is uh okay with it, maybe uh switching up the order, having Dalton kind of following third uh taking up the uh the rear um i don't think that would be any problem at all and then he'd probably be uh switching his rapier out for his uh his hand crossbow um given we're not trying to be given we're trying to now move uh not stealthily more quickly he'll have his torch out as well again for light um yeah, but otherwise, I think, yeah, I, I agree with uh, Wesley. Gotcha. Uh, so, yeah, as you guys kind of push forward here, um, you're going to have basically some of these, uh, like, jinking and turning halls uh, as they have, like, 20 or 30 foot, like, straightaways, and then they turn off in a 45 degree angle. Uh, and you kind of start to recognize that there's a certain function here of the way the rats have been fighting with like crossbows and weapons that there's a certain amount of they can cover a hallway and have cover or they can shoot down the hallway and kind of flee into cover and it seems like they've built these halls like on some level in this kind of functionality of you know like their sort of way of fighting here and you kind of cover a few of these distances um, and uh, you'll probably start to hear some signs of, uh, like, rattling chains uh, effectively before um, you guys round a corner and you are going to see another of these rat folk here. Um, I think what we're going to do is do another initiative and just see if you guys beat the rats it is a single i rolled a six um so it probably doesn't ch stand much of a chance um versus you guys here oh, i rolled a 10 uh, 13 total for dalton all right i got a 15 with seraph um so service behind you guys um let me have one of you roll a d20 to see if it dodges and one of you roll a d8 to see how much damage Remember, if you're rolling DD20 to roll low. That's a 15. Okay, the so it's going to dodge the damage uh, from above uh, as Seraph like, drops a Sacred Flame onto it. Um, I think Dalton had the second highest with the 10. Uh, 13, yeah. I think Wesley had the 10. Okay. Yeah, yeah, 13, though, will still be you, Dalton. Um, you'll go next uh, as you guys kind of round this thing. Um, you've got Seraph and Wesley in front of you, um, as you guys see it. But what would you like to do? A short, 
crossbow? Uh, yeah, assuming he can get a you know a, a decent line of sight, and he's yeah, he'll he'll I think he'll fire his hand crossbow. Yeah, um, and I'm gonna use up my inspiration that I got back uh, to give myself advantage. Gotcha. Yeah, it'd have a little bit of cover, but with advantage and how low their AC is, you stand a pretty high chance of hitting it. Uh, yes, that should be a 23 to hit for 9 damage. Yeah, that's going to kill it off. I rolled for it to have 7 hit points, so. So that would have been you guys somewhere around that little spot that I just revealed there. Um, basically, as you kind of like rounded these corners, uh, getting to about the last of this little hall. Uh, where you can eventually round the final corner and you will spot while you do not have both of your friends return. You have saved Jinx. Yeah, so Dalton is going to um, move forward, going to recover his bolt. And is Jinx, uh, assuming he's chained up, he's probably going to, Dalton might search for, look to see if this uh, rat thing is carrying any sort of key. Uh, Yeah, do an investigation on the rat. Because you've been so good at those in the past. Oh, not a one, a two this time. So three total. Uh, you can find a key that seems to be for the locks here. Um, and you can basically move over to Jinx and free him. Um, he's not, like, unconscious, but he's definitely not, like, in it here. Um, effectively, Jinx is just kind of, like, almost like commoner stats at present. Um, where he's kind of in a stupor here. Gotcha. So yeah, so Dalton will use the key to 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 free Jinx from you trying to like kind of like you know uh, support him, uh, trying to uh, kind of help him back to the others, and uh, probably try to ask him like uh, what happened to to Malsham? Where you separated? Um, not sure if Jinx is in any sort of right mind to answer but uh he'll be asking him that as he's kind of helping him back towards uh wesley and seraph um i think you're gonna find jinx kind of like um almost uh sort of like wandering like broken thoughts um he recalls different things it's hard to piece together one thing from the next with how he describes things, you very quickly kind of recognize like his thoughts are just kind of like broken up and sporadic at present. Um, and it just kind of gives a state of um, just kind of what has been sort of happening. Um, you sort of have this like recollection from him of the God of filth kind of being like invoked over them over and over again that at first they were presented uh to the rat god and you very quickly kind of recognize that they're talking about the like actual temple uh that you guys walked into and then some of his other thoughts are like referencing the god of filth and it's very clearly a different god and you'll start to kind of like connect the dots that like there's a rat god god of filth and there's also like a god of filth, god of filth. Um, and it seems that at some point that was the last time that Jink saw Malchin was when the two of them were presented before the god of filth. Um, and it just kind of a lot of these kind of feelings kind of brought together where at some point they were separated. He feels like they were held together and that they were being kept for something. Um, let me get a perception check from each of you. This is actually something I should have looked up. I forgot about this, but this was something I thought about last week, and I don't think I've put much effort into this week. Uh, 12 for Dalton. Yeah, and a 13 total for uh, Wesley. So, I have to find this real quick. My apologies. Um, this is where if I had better access to my Notion... I think I would be more prepared with it. Um, not terribly stoked that Justin is not here if I'm about to do this to his character. Um, but there is 
something important. My bad. My notion usually like links me. There we go. I, like take notes about some of these got some of these groups and shit in Tolis. And then have like all their pages linked because holy shit, like there's so many different like cross linking of them all. Wasn't even complete. But half the notes. Three sixty four. It's a question for Wesley and uh, Dalton: Is do we keep searching for Malchum or with Jinx looking in bad shape? Do we try to get him back to the surface first? If you had any thoughts on that, Chris? I think King Wesley at least would try to get search for Malshan a bit more at least. Doesn't want to leave without looking around a bit yeah. more, but he doesn't really want to like drag doesn't really know Yings, but like this other guy around and maybe get him hurt in the process. Yeah. Uh yeah, Dalton will follow. Will follow that uh, that lead. I, th I guess he probably met because Jinx is one of the ones that rescued him, right? I don't think I was actually there for that week when they actually rescued him. I think that was vaguely around when Justin started playing again. I think so. Because I, I want to remember that he was there, with, like at the auction, right? Yeah, I think he jumped in on that one, so it was like a lot for him because he didn't really know what was going on, but Yeah, so Dalton will probably try to keep like, you know, uh keep close and keep an eye on, on Jinx sort of like protectively, but uh yeah, he'll he's good with uh keeping going and trying to see if we can find Malchum or signs of him at least. Beyond the the kind of what they found in that uh that other room. Yeah the leather strap. Uh, yeah I think West would suggest at least like you and Jinx like keep uh in the back and that Wesley and Seraph, take the front. We look around. Yep, yeah, that works for for Dalton. We'll probably have uh, probably won't be carrying his torch anymore because he'll probably be have like he'll have his crossbow out in one hand in case we're into something, and then kind of the other kind of probably well at this point probably he and Jigs will be leaning on each other a little bit because Dalton's still looking pretty rough. But yeah, kind of following behind uh, Wesley and Seraph. Um, Seraph has the ability to light up a object. Do you want light? If Seraph and uh, Wesley are moving together, do you want to have light on, say, your crossbow, something like that? Uh, maybe on like he's got a he's also got a dagger kind of uh, strap. So maybe on like the the hilt of that. So yes, yeah, so maybe he'll have light. Uh, on him, but not on the crossbow specifically. Gotcha. So yeah, he can light up whatever object you care for. Um, yeah, my bad. So I know that there is essentially something else at play here, um, and there is going to be a chance that if you guys rescue Malchin, um, that Malchin and Jinx um, effectively have uh, deformities on them at this point. Um, in taking my vacation, I can't find this exact thing. I don't want to look too much further for it um, to roll like beforehand. Um, but I think it works out better this way on some levels because I can let Justin roll the dice to see if Jinx has like a permanent um, deformation here when I find those rules. Um, in the same way that I would want Chris to be able to roll for Malchin. To see if Malchin has a random deformation. Holy shit, I just found a random encounter chart for rats in the sewers. I didn't know that was there. 
and it's a lot tougher than the random encounters that I feel like I've been making. Um, but yeah, so I think we'll continue uh, with that shortly here. But um, what were those perception checks that you guys just rolled there? Uh, mine was a 12. I feel like Wesley was about the same, like a 13. Yeah, uh, that was a 13. So I'd say at this point, you guys kind of have a recognition um, maybe that Jinx has uh, like some signs of uh, like the disease. Um, you probably have some semblance of recognizing um, that Dalton is ma manifesting some of the symptoms. So I think at this point we can kind of like put it to you guys are recognizing on some level uh, you're going to need uh, like clerical assistance to cure some of what you've picked up by venturing this deep into like the God of Filth's domain. Gotcha. And for, for Dalton, would this be like uh, manifesting enough that it would be um, causing issues, I guess, mechanically? Like, is it like could be, he'd be considered poisoned, or or for now, it's just kind of like he just, he's something feels off. I don't know how long it takes to essentially manifest like real symptoms. Honestly, the funny thing about this is it doesn't even have any negative effects to the disease. Um, I have a feeling <laughs> that Monty Cook meant to connect two different diseases together, um, but effectively the rats just transmit a disease. It's got to mean that he meant to connect it to one of the other diseases that actually does something. Um, but at present here, um, I think most, I think the rat disease that he has in his book um, is something that onsets in like hours and days. So my point is more to just reference that like you have minimal symptoms. Uh, Jinx has a little bit greater symptoms. Um, so that gives you a little bit of like a time frame with Mountain as well. Um, that the sooner that you save him, the more you can reduce um, the potential symptoms and long-term exposure might cause. Gotcha. Makes sense. Damn, I forgot there's a whole, like, chapter in this book all about the sewers. So, you guys have Jinx. Uh, you've now got a four-person party. Uh, you've investigated a solid amount of these areas here. Um, you think you've defeated... Uh, like any of your immediate enemies. Um, at present, you have um, basically one direction that you have not covered, and that is further to the south, um, essentially where you saw um, the rat with the dragon pistol kind of coming from. Yeah, that seems the uh, the way to go. Yeah. Usla will go out there, see? Let's find any signs of or anything at all. Oops. So as you head back out of that like secret door that you had gone through uh, and kind of move into this next uh, area um, where you had kind of seen some of the rats before, um, again, you kind of come up on one of these rooms that's like a room of filth, and you could kind of see signs that the rats uh, somewhat like make a habitation of this. Uh, that this is a little bit more of, uh, like, where they would spend more time with a little bit more space here. Um, there's certainly still piles of filth and, like, rat-like nests of objects and things, like, in the corners of these little alcoves. Uh, let me get a insight from the two of you. Uh, for a grand total of a one from a roll two. Uh, 16 for Dalton. Gotcha. So you kind of get a sensation, Dalton, that this is uh, like a guard post of sorts. Um, this is um, kind of like where you can pick up the idea of like a narrow passage in 
the narrow passage out. It gives them plenty of space in these two directions to kind of hold off and kind of stave off any attacks. Um, but you can kind of like make that reference to yourself here. Um, if you all continue off to the south, it is not long until you kind of like move into a section of sewers uh, and basically find uh, if Mauchin is there, you're going to be looking for Mauchin in the entirety of the sewers. Um, and it kind of points back to here. Mauchin is probably somewhere here and you guys have to discover where. So when you guys come back into this area, uh, do you have any other thoughts of where you might have lost the path towards your friend Malchin? Well, we found evidence that he was held uh, at least briefly in that little secret room. Um, we weren't really looking for any kind of similar things before we noticed that one, which had, I think you said had been kind of like just left slightly ajar by the rat thing. So uh, maybe there was like a, another secret, uh, some other kind of hidden room or alcove along the, in the tunnels that we missed, you know, either between fighting the zombies and getting here. Maybe we try and retrace our steps and see if we find it. Or or, would, or maybe, I don't know, it would make more sense that there would be something within this kind of more guard barracks area if they wanted to, like, you know, if they kept prisoners here. Maybe there's a, I don't know, some signs in here. You know, Wesley, what do you, what do you think? Not really sure, but Tall place seems riddled with secret areas, so it's just best just to look around, see if we can find anything. Might as well start here. So, like in the guard post? Uh, yeah, like start in the guard post and like this will have Wes's idea like to go through the corridor that we came from uh, with the zombies and everything. See if we can find it secret door there, because there seems to be a lot of secret doors in the corridors. Does that sound good to Dalton? Um, check the guard post first. Yeah, maybe, like, each one of us essentially take a side of the room kind of thing. Gotcha. Uh, let's go for the two of you at present. Like, let me get an investigation from you. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> Dalton is not finding anything. I mean, and I rolled a two. <laughs> you've rolled maybe ten to fifteen d twenty today, and a solid like five ones. I feel like, and like two twos. Yeah, investigation and perception for the most part have not been Dalton's uh, strong suit today. Been doing all right in combat, but yeah. That's uh, at least for the. I think my last three investigation checks have been one, two, one. So you guys make a pretty thorough search around the room, uh, taking your time to try to like clean some of the refuse, some of the filth from it, uh, and make my bad and make like a um, like strategic, uh, like orderly search of the room. So you don't like mistake anything or miss anything and time goes by and kind of like exhaust yourselves like mentally before you just kind of like give way for it doesn't seem to be in here or rather there doesn't seem to be a way forward. In. I must have missed something in the tunnels coming in. Uh, so if that sounds like the next place we're going to go for, let me get another round of investigations as you guys move into the tunnels and start to search um, kind of effectively, like between the zombies. <laughs> between the zombies and that first round of rats that you guys fight, fought. 
Uh, I think with a two and an eight, it is safe to say that you guys once again like spend a solid amount of time searching and wandering through, and uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna say um, Dalton, as you're kind of going through, yeah, um, one of the like zombies that like was like piecemealed. Um, you're just kind of like searching through and without really paying attention, all of a sudden you like move like a little bit of stone that was like on top of one of these zombie skulls and all of a sudden it starts to snap at you. Uh, you have to dispatch a already decapitated uh, zombie head that tries to bite into you. Uh, but other than a little bit of a shock from the zombie, uh, there doesn't appear to be anything else to be found inside of these halls. Dalton's trying to recall if I, I think as far as we know, this is essentially there weren't any like uh branches like uh, you know uh like open to the naked eye branches that we that we didn't explore, right? They kind of we went down the stairway um from the temple and it kind of was like a one way leading down this way, right? I think there was a couple of hallways where we didn't go. Like, where those two... The the first big fight we had. Like, we went through a secret door afterwards, instead of the door where they came out from. Then afterwards, I think... Yeah. Like this. So if we backtrack you guys all the way back through like the indistinguishably long like winding tunnel, um, Dalton is indeed correct. Like that whole area was effectively to the naked eye a straight path from here through to the sewers. You guys found two secret doors that were the only two things that lead off basically from that straight path into the sewers. So if you guys kind of give way and come back to here, you do indeed have effectively um, two other ways to go that you guys did not investigate the first time. As the first time you were here, um, I think uh, Wesley was searching around this corner um, to the south and basically saw that there was a door to the southwest. And Seraph spotted that the footsteps were leading to the east. Um, And I think something pretty similar happened when you guys had the were-rat and the priestess come out of the west. um, And you guys saw that the footsteps were leading through the secret door um, to the east there. And you basically, again, um, ignored what was to the west, where they came from, and you went towards those footsteps. So at present, I think those two doorways are the last effective places where you could have turned off and perhaps missed Malchik. Okay. Yeah, so Delton is thinking the 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 woman that we fought, the you know, priestess or or she seemed like some sort of leader. Um so maybe it would make sense to investigate the area that she came from. Uh, she is also the only non-rat that you have seen in this place as well. Very right. important to recall that she was very much a human. Right, so if, if Melchin and, and Jinx were separated at some point and Jinx was kind of rambling a little bit about, you know, two different gods of filth, maybe... Yeah, so that yeah, so Dalton is thinking maybe we try to uh, investigate where she had come out of. It's, to him, that seems maybe the most likely place we might stumble on some more uh, any evidence of where Malchin might have been taken. Yeah, uh, what's the thing so as well? So you're thinking head back towards that initial room that you guys fought in and start to move to the west. Yeah. Alrighty, so that door is already left open. Uh, when you guys move back in, 
you can see that there is a hall uh, that extends forward and to the other side, about 40 or so feet. You can see another door that is opened, uh, and you can see signs that there is a hall that kind of moves to the south from within that area. So Dalton's going to gesture off to his left. Um, Suggest maybe we try that southern door. Okay. Um, West will go for it. West will try to like open the southern door like as quietly as he can, I guess. Not sure if there's any you still, but like just make sure that he doesn't hurt anything inside if he can, maybe. Gotcha. Give me one second. Just want to make sure doing something cruel here isn't necessarily too cruel. It probably is too cruel, but I think I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, as you reach out to the door and you start to grasp the door handle, uh, when you go to pull on it, you're going to feel kind of like almost a rubbery kind of like pull to the door handle. Uh, let me get a insight from you real quick, Wesley. Yeah, that is a five total. Alrighty. Uh, so as Wesley goes to pull on this door and try to like slowly open it, uh, those of you behind him are going to watch as the door handle actually starts to like almost melt around his hand. Um, and it is going to uh, bite down on you. And do a little bit reduced because it should not be as tough as it is. Uh, but I'm going to deal um, five points of acid damage to you uh, as a door uh, begins to bite down and chew on uh, Wesley's hand. Uh, I want you guys to roll initiative as Wesley is grappled by a mimic. Is this going to be the second character I lose to a mimic? That's almost precisely why I said Ooh, this might be too cruel, but um, you guys cleared this and like ignored everything, so like I got to do something to put at least a little bit of a challenge here. Uh, 23 for initiative for Dalton. Uh, 22 total for uh, Wesley. And serves a 12. So, Dalton, as you watch this thing, uh, like, consume his hand, and you see as, like, his hand almost starts to smoke as, like, the acid starts to eat away at Wesley's flesh, uh, what is your thought uh, as this door, like, loses its, like, material properties and almost starts to turn into a sort of, like, creature? Uh, like object. Yeah, I think Dalton and, is uh, not expecting this. Um, I think mimics are a unique enough creature that it kind of makes sense to me that like everybody knows they exist, but nobody believes they exist until you ever see them. It like should be high in like the zeitgeist of like mythical creatures. But just like we, as people, don't believe vampires exist, if you ever encountered a vampire, you would be like, holy shit, they were right the whole time. Gotcha. Right. Um, yeah, so I think Dalton is going to... Um, I think at this point, he's just got, a, he's got his crossbow out. He's just going to fire at the no longer a door uh or mimic thing um he's probably shouting like uh, wesley get back uh as he fires um i am going to use my inspiration from that last atrocious uh investigation role to give myself advantage here so that should be a 22 to hit for nine damage gotcha uh, Wesley, as you go to move away, your hand is held by this thing. You are grappled. Your movement speed is effectively zero. You can fight back, 
or you can try to break the grapple. Um, but effectively, your action is one or the other. Uh, if you want to move, you know, your action has to be to try to break the grapple. I think first instinct would be probably to attack it. Let's see. Uh, how does that work with grapple? Am I disadvantage or just regular roll? I can't think of the actual word offhand, even though I've got my restrained is when you actually have issues with attacking. Grapple is just movement. Okay, and well, let's see. A 22 to hit. Solid hit. For a grand total of 14 damage. Uh, with your sneak attack? Yeah, I rolled really low. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, you stab through, and this creature is going to kind of melt away in front of you, um, as the creature dies, uh, and with the door kind of dissipating in front of you, you see into the room ahead, and you see a massive statue of a pretty horrendous god, uh, which, again, I don't actually have a statue to represent this. Um, but you have um, this large, bulbous figure that is just like um, almost, um, damn, I almost said Boba Fett, but that is the wrong guy from the right Star Wars. Um, Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt, yeah. You have almost like a Jabba the Hutt kind of figure where it's like rolls and rolls of flesh. And you can see, like, the rot, like, the pimples and the pustules and, like, the bulbous, like, flesh diseases that cover this thing's entirety. Um, and none of its flesh is, like, smooth and clean. And you can just see this, like, god statue in front of you. And while it's not physically flesh, everything about these tunnels that you've been in reek of horrendous filth. Everything about this area of this temple reeks of horrendous filth and disease. And to see this statue almost causes the extra sensory like pain of this smell that you try so hard to to, to like ignore. Um and you'll almost certainly have Jinx kind of recoil in seeing this statue again uh, as this doorway becomes a little bit clear and Jinx kind of recoils from uh, like almost like a latent fear of the rats and how they worshipped at it and kind of of that description of like how he was like presented before this god and was accepted by it uh, as a potential sacrifice. This is, as Jinx is recoiling, Delton's Trying to like kind of like holding an arm, holding a hand out, trying to essentially kind of like reassure him, but at the same time he's like probably leaning over and 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 retching and and he's pretty um he's recoiling from this thing as well. He's uh he's kind of recalling his own captivity and he thought, you know, he had it pretty bad, but this being sort of it's almost seemed even worse, but he's getting like almost like flashbacks as he kind of sees this this statue, and um, but eventually will kind of uh, straighten up and try to give like a like a trying to be brave nod to to Wesley and kind of uh, ready to to move in to the room. Uh, are either of you proficient in religion? Uh, Delton is not. Uh, Wesley is not. I like Justin has a cleric with a negative one in intelligence and religion. Well, I feel like there's probably a lot of, uh, kind of like the uh, Middle Ages, right? People who were, you know, going to the clergy doesn't necessarily mean you're a religious sort. Often, it just means you're the third son.
My bad. What were you saying, Chris? I was gonna say, could I even mean just like, just because you're like a member of the clergy doesn't mean you doesn't necessarily mean you have to know a lot about the religion. You could just have faith, like blind faith in what you believe in. First son was the heir. Second son was was the military. Third son was the clergy. Um, yeah, I'm going to say with an eight, uh, Seraph does not recognize this god. Um, I think a solid reason to say any given clergy, like clergy member, doesn't have a solid sense of religion is also simply when people are dogmatic. Um, and he's, you know, like a staunch believer in Lothianism. There's no reason to understand any other gods. And that's a perfect reason to not be proficient in religion. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you guys don't have any interest in, like, stepping into the actual Temple of Filth, um, I don't necessarily think that you have any reason to either. Uh, and especially since Jinx is effectively recoiling from it at, at present. Yeah, now with the way that was described, I think Wesley is ready to just get away from that. So theoretically, the other door to the west uh, is open a little bit already. Um, you guys can see kind of like a uh, like bed inside. Um, for what it's worth, you guys enter in and open up that door. Uh, you can basically find the chamber of, I don't have their names on hand at present, um, but the priestess and um, her were companion. Um, and this is effectively a bedroom. Uh, just like a bed, maybe like a chest of drawers. Um, you know, pretty simple and austere, um, certainly still filthy. Um, yeah, I don't think there's too much other to explain in like what their living uh, quarters would be like. So Delno will suggest that we kind of search the room just in case there's some other evidence that Melchin was ever here. Um, I can go through the chest and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then I guess maybe also, maybe there's a similarly like, a, could be a some sort of secret door passage in here somewhere. Um, so he's gonna suggest we kind of take a little bit of time and kind of try to search this room fairly thoroughly. Uh, so when you are ready, if you want to do a search through this room, um, as far as I'm concerned, both of you guys can do an investigation uh, and kind of search through. If you're, like, physically tossing stuff, perception if you just want to, like, look over things. Uh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 20 for me, too, <laughs> on an investigation. So make the total of 21 for oh, Dolph. Shit. I was going to say there was only one thing to find, but two nat 20s. Um, you guys already got the shit from her. She's a big boon already. I don't know if I want to give you extra shit. Um, well, we could also just be very, very confident that there's nothing worth finding. Like we know we did a good search. Yeah. So um definitely solid search of the room. Um you guys do find basically like the center of their bed underneath like the uh like mattress of uh like um I don't know why thinking of straw made me think the word clay. But underneath their bed of, like, straw, underneath their, like, mattress, it's, like, filled of straw, you basically find, like, 
uh, underneath the bed frame, there's like a center area that's cut out and there's an iron lock box in the center of the bed. So it's only in removing the mattress that you have like a chance of kind of recognizing this as if you just like touched any of it from above, it all kind of feels um, the same as like just a bed frame or like a box underneath uh, like the actual bed. Um, but kind of going through it, um, saying lockbox might be a misnomer because there's no reason for this to be locked. Um, you basically just find a kind of stack of papers um, among the things that you uh, pick out from this iron box uh, is uh, various mentions of different like groups um i would say the temple of the ebon hand comes up multiple times um and under the ebon hand cult the mention of the children of the hand um or specifically the transformed children of the hand um and this will come up more when I actually confirm, I do have the table like ready, but again, I'd rather let Justin roll for it. Um, and if you guys come up on Malchim here, I'll let Chris roll for it. Um, but if they end up having a deformity. Which I think actually might be a 100% chance that they do have a deformity. Um, Yeah, yeah, there's not actually a chance that they don't. Um, you're basically going to recognize that um, Jinx and Malchin are deformed in a way that now that you have this paperwork um, might give you a little bit of a sense that somehow the Ebon Hand and the Cult of the Rat God, or perhaps simply this God of Filth, uh, are connected. Um, but at present, that's kind of what you guys get. Um, the paperwork in here, though, is again that it mentions the Temple of the Ebon Hand and then the transformed children of the Ebon Hand cult. So that'll, Dalton will kind of like looking through that and seeing those mentions and his first thought is like, you know, what are they, you know, we, especially like the transformed children of the Ebon Hand cult. He's like, oh, God, what are they doing to uh, Melchin and, uh, of looking to to like Wesley and Seraph, and we have to we have to find him. I don't think, uh, and he's gonna like glancing towards the the that temple um, to their south, and this, he similarly does not want to go in there. Um, but wondering, maybe you know, um, found one secret staircase be one statue um but maybe i think there was the other area we hadn't searched yet uh, so maybe we, we start there i guess the other doorway up past the uh uh those last of those dead rat things yeah, I think right now, right where Wesley was pointing out, that's the last way that you guys haven't searched. Oh, sorry, I missed. Uh, I missed where he. Um... I oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I think the doorway up beyond the rats here, that like leads back up into the temple. That's like where the staircases came out when you guys moved the initial rat god aside. Oh, gotcha. Okay, for some reason I was thinking we came from. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, then, then, yeah, where, um, yeah, that other door to our, uh, yeah, down here. Yeah. So when you guys go back over there and search into that room, uh, that is going to be a room filled. Uh, with different goods and sort of things that have effectively been kind of like captured and taken um, effectively, that is a treasure room. Um, let me have you guys roll a investigation for me. Here. Uh, 
That's a two. So uh, then, back to normal. And an 11 total for Sheldon. Um, Wesley, uh, let me have each of you roll a d100. Thirty-five from Wesley, and forty. The notion just died on me. I don't know how this browser can be so bad. Shouldn't hate on it so much though, because it is running. All right, uh, Wesley can pick up, um, effectively a vial of. Uh, like a red liquid uh, that you are pretty confident is a potion of healing. Um, I think as is probably necessary all the time, I should ask you to write down um, potion of healing from the temple of the rat god. Need to generate a first level spell scroll or seraph. And then a 40. Mm -hmm. How to describe this? Um, Demarcus, you can grab a vial. Mm. I don't know how this would physically look. I guess like a pretty clear liquid potion uh, that kind of like moves like water, um, but there's like distinctly like a few like long, thick, fibrous hairs in there. And as far as you're concerned, like they're like after fighting a bunch of like stinky, dirty rats, like they're big, like rat thick hairs. Um, probably a little bit longer than most rats could go for. Um, but effectively, like, you can kind of see, like, this vial has, you know, like, two hairs and an otherwise, like, clear liquid into it. Um, but you can write down Potion of Hill Giant Strength uh, from the Temple of the Rat Gods. Um, again, one of the things is, technically you don't know that, but I really need you guys for like recording it purposes to write these things down. So it's kind of like a uh, gray area of how we treat the record keeping versus just letting you know. Um, but yeah, otherwise, other than finding like a few little baubles uh, inside of this room, um, you guys can again kind of confirm uh, it's not where Malchin is. Dalton is simply kind of looking at the, uh, like holding up the vial and kind of like, like shaking it and looking at the hairs a little, definitely a little tentatively, but uh, figures it might be worth something. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's going to look to Wesley and after we kind of finish looking through this room and uh, fortunately, uh, I think I'm all out of ideas where we might, where they could have taken him. Yeah, me too. I think the only last ditch effort I have is looking through that room with the statue. That's not going to be pleasant. room gives me the creeps, but I'll uh, try and help you take a look through. Uh, Seraph, perhaps you could just uh, keep an eye on Jinx, man, uh, watch the door. But Dalton will, yeah, try to steal himself to go into the room with the uh, the other god of filth to Maybe there's something in in there. All right. Uh, so as you guys head in there and start to, like, mess around with the uh, statue of the God of Filth, uh, 
let me have you both roll initiative here. Oh, uh, nat one for seven. Uh, 22. At least I get inspiration, finally. All right, so as you are kind of like moving around this room, there are like some like offerings uh, to the god, like in this room, like, you know, like rotting meat, uh, like dead flowers. Um, there's a lot of things that kind of like show like the beauty of death. Um, were you somebody to worship this thing uh, from somebody from perhaps a little bit more normal of a zeitgeist, uh, just sort of something that are just everything that is like the definition of filth uh, is kind of like represented in here in some of these like presentations at the feet of this god. Um, when you guys step into the room and start to kind of search around uh, like touching walls and kind of moving things and poking and prodding, um, you're eventually going to kind of catch sight that the statue is almost starting to like weep out this like liquid like gelatin that's slowly starting to creep down and it might at first catch Dalton's eye but then you like shake it off like it's just the statue there's nothing here um and then you kind of like continue on and I swear it was coming out of that pustule, and now it's like down at the legs. Um, and it's basically like a couple of different moments of recognizing um, that something is physically moving from this god, and like the filth is like extending out towards you, uh, that you kind of make the recognition uh, that this god is basically like reaching out to you. Uh, and at first, um, we're going to go for, yeah, I think I'm going to make, um, let me get an insight check from you, Dalton. Uh, 19. That's good enough for me to say that you kind of recognize the threat far enough in advance that by the time that you see this, like, slime mold kind of, like, almost reaching out to attack you, you are already kind of, like, anticipating some sort of malevolence uh, and are ready for it. Um, but you basically have this thing kind of reaching out to attack. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, yeah, so as he's kind of finally able to confirm this kind of weird feeling and seeing this thing coming out uh i think dalton is going to be he's pretty like disgusted and he doesn't want this thing near him um so he's not sure if this is going to work but he is going to attempt to cast uh dissonant whispers to essentially force it to ooze away from him Does it have to share a language with you? Uh, no, it just it can't be. It automatically succeeds if it is deafened. Because it's more like it's a discordant melody. It's not so much words. Yeah, it's mildly interesting because it is immune to being deafened. It also has no languages. But yeah, go ahead. Um, roll for that. All right, so that would be a DC. Or I guess what is it? I have a saving throw first. Yeah. Uh, DC thirteen wisdom. I'll go ahead and roll the damage in case it's. I got a ten. I get a twelve total. Okay, so it will take. Uh, so twelve would fail. Yeah, crap damage. It'll take six psychic damage. And must immediately use its reaction if available to move as far as its speed allows away from you. 
but it will move into obviously dangerous ground if there is any in here. Uh, probably not, but. And how much damage did you say you did? Uh, six psychic. Rolled very low, 3d6. Gotcha. So you've got, um, oh, what kind of damage is that? Psychic? Psychic, yeah. Gotcha. Um, you've got Seraph in there as well, um, or maybe off in the background, kind of overlooking, but certainly um, potential to help you guys there. Do you have any thoughts on how Seraph is reacting? Uh, yes, and just to add, Dalton's also kind of like backing away, even as he's kind of trying to, you know, force the creature to move from him. He's moving back uh, out into the uh, the hallway a little bit, and uh... Hmm. Uh, maybe for Seraph, I'm thinking maybe he starts with the Sacred Flame. If it affects this thing. Especially since it's kind of oozing out of this terrible god, I feel like maybe Sacred Flame kind of fits. Kind of like burn away its abhorrence. So I rolled an 8. It will not dodge the Sacred Flame. Would one of you like to roll damage with a d8? My bad, never mind. It has one hit point left. It doesn't matter. Uh, Wesley, roll a perception check for me. A total of six. Uh, so effectively, your turn is going to pass while you think the uh, issue at hand um, is more or less handled, um, which it is not. Um, there is going to be a, um, another of these molds that is going to reach out with its pseudopod and try to grasp it, Wesley, and a 10 is most certainly not going to hit. Um, and it's going to go, I think that means that there is no chance this thing's going to get to attack again. Um, and it's going to go back around to Dalton. What would you like to do? All right, so I think now Dalton is uh my bad. Let me put it this way. I think it would make sense if uh Wesley at least held an action for the perhaps threat that something was unseen. So when it attacks you, let's have you attack as a reaction with Wesley. If that sounds good to you. Are you there, Chris? No, oh, I'm sorry. I think I missed what you said. Do you have a thought there if uh, Dalton seems to kill the only imminent threat? Do you think Wesley is going to just kind of like hang out and do nothing? Do you think you would like hold an action for any other imperceptible threat? Do you think you would like dodge? Do you have a thought on what you might be doing when your turn just kind of goes by effectively without any threat? I mean, I think with that perceptional I I think we would like relax a bit thinking like oh they got it already so I don't think he's doing much all right so it's acceptable to you that your turn just kind of goes by as you just kind of like let your guard down yeah I think that fits gotcha all right then back to you there uh Dalton what would you like to do all right, yeah, so I think for a second, Dalton thought, okay, we, you know, as he saw the thing kind of burning up from Seraph's uh, sacred flame, um, but then as the, said so another pseudopod comes out to kind of attack uh, Wesley, he'll kind of with a kind of deep breath, he'll, he'll move to rush back in, and if he sees something like physical to attack, he'll go after that, um, this time with his rapier. Um, if he, like, doesn't see an immediate, like, opponent, he would, like, hold an attack, um, probably for, 
um, the first thing to uh, could he say like could it be general like it's the first thing to attack him or an ally or does that have to be more specific? Um, as far as the trigger goes, I usually think it's just as specific as you want it to be. Um, so it just depends, like, what you're looking for. I guess, like, maybe, like, something like the first, like, he saw, like, this pseudopod, so, like, something, um, like, an, an, any, like, if an ooze-like appendage comes into range, she'll attack it. Gotcha. Is there a particular reason you don't want to just attack it right now? Well, no, I was saying if he, sorry, I said like if there, because I wasn't sure if there was something he like saw. If he sees it, he's going to, yeah, he's just going to attack it. But I wasn't sure. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, um, this one just was imperceptible in the filth until I actually reached out and struck out for uh, Wesley there. But at this point, yeah, you've got eyes on this one and can certainly attack it if you would like. Okay, yep, yeah, then, yeah, that's what he'll do then, uh, uh, with his rapier. Uh, that is likely to miss with a, well, uh, yeah, a nine to hit. Uh, yes, this is, that will indeed miss, um, as you see is like, stabbing out with the rapier like the slime almost like disintegrates in that area as it just like opens up a little hole and you stab like right through it um and you can basically see this creature's defense is actively to move out of the way all right uh yeah that's all he can do there gotcha uh so that's going to take us to uh seraphim um, do you guys have any thoughts on what Seraph is going to do? Um, just another Sacred Flame. Seemed to work pretty well last time. I'm thinking probably, yeah, same same deal. Yeah. I keep rolled burning. a... Sorry. What was that? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, keep burning that filth with holy fire. Gotcha. I rolled a 15 um, as it moves out of the way of... Dalton's rapier, the like beam of light comes down from on high and it moves out of the way of that. Uh, and it's going to go to Wesley. You now see your foe in front of you. What would you like to do? Oh, seeing uh, that we weren't done yet, he's going to try to stab it. See if he can hit this. That is a total of 13. 13 is sufficient to hit. For a total of 11 damage. Well, that's no fun. 11 is exactly how many hit points I had rolled for it. And I don't get to play around with this creature's attack. Because they deal a random attack. So I don't exactly know what they're going to do until they hit you. Uh, but yeah, as you stab into it, uh, unable to dodge three attacks in a row, you kind of pierce through it. And the slime like loses the magic that's kind of holding it together, and it kind of just dissipates into the rest of the filth within this room, uh, and we'll kind of leave it at you have a little bit of a recognition that besides the horrific creature uh, depicted in this uh, massive fat creature of disease, uh, there's also a solid reason that maybe you shouldn't be poking around in this temple. Yeah, as the uh, the second ooze goes down, Dalton's going to, uh, yeah, he's going to uh, back out pretty quickly, and we uh, give this place a follow our initial instincts and give that place a wide berth, as wide as we can. And Wesley, uh, at this point, I'm kind of out of uh, of ideas. Uh, Maybe we should try and get Jinx to the surface and maybe take these uh, these notes we found. Uh, uh, maybe someone more knowledgeable can tell us something about this, uh, this Ebon Hand cult that it keeps mentioning. Perhaps we can learn something about that. Perhaps we'll 
find uh, something that will help us find uh, Melchum. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. We should get uh, that man Jinx out of here. Doesn't seem like we're finding Melchum anytime soon. So if you've any ideas on where else we might search down here, I'm certainly willing to uh, continue. But do you think Wesley would give up? I mean, no, not really. I think he would give. I think he, actually, unless Jinx is looking like he's about to kill over, he's probably want to go through. Some rooms, some maybe again. I see. think over and over again, for many purposes, you guys are all adventurers. Jinx has always recognized that, like, adventuring is your life at risk. And I think all of you recognize this. The fact that you have saved him brings back autonomy into his grasp. Um, and that is so much of what matters as an adventurer that you are not killed under somebody else's uh, kind of like decision making um i think it very much is kind of like the uh death in battle takes you to valhalla like adventurers want to die for their own reasoning so i don't think you guys necessarily have to worry per se about jinx for jinx's sake if any of you were to die right now you would have a good death um so i don't necessarily think that's a good reason for at the very least wesley to leave right now. Um, but it is up to you guys. If you think you're done, that's fine. Um, but what do you guys really think right now? Are you just kind of at a impasse where you don't know how to move forward? Or do you think your characters are actually done searching for Mountain? I think in, in Dalton's case, it's more that he just... Uh... Not sure where to search next, or so that he thinks like um, that we should leave. Uh, I mean, it's possible we missed a, you know, in some of the places we already tried to search for the secret doors, maybe we missed, or maybe we searched some of this area more thoroughly for any sort of secret or hidden areas. So I would say at this point, being that we have effectively completed this mission, um, I'm going to tell you guys, um, I think what got you is that you need to be secret searching for a secret door that is hidden behind a secret door. Mauchin was just beyond the initial room you guys were preparing to rest in. Fuck, really? I mean, it's one of the best places to hide stuff because you guys felt like you found the secret door. Um, but yeah, you guys can basically, you know, without actively giving up, uh, kind of return to this idea of searching, um, you might encounter a few more random rat men, um, theoretically without numbers against you. You guys shouldn't have any great threat from any given rat men. Um, overall, I would say, you know, you might have another one or two that you have to battle. Um, you guys can kind of make the recollection that the rat men have this area uh, that passes under uh, the Blessed Bridge and underneath the King's River. Um, you might recall and recognize that the sewers is like the midtown sewers. Um, so this is an area that kind of passes between the temple district and the sewers. Uh, but yeah, you guys can basically rescue Alchin in a pretty similar, like kind of like end room with a single rat guarding him. Um, and basically kind of free him from that point. Um, but with Malchin, I want you to roll um his deformity because Malchin and uh Jinx have been touched uh by the god of filth. So please roll a D ten. That is a ten. Um so you have a <laughs> you are a what is it not Merman. 
um, a triton with a snout-like mouth. You can spit acid four times a day um, as if using mouth's acid arrow. Okay. That... He's looking kind of weird now. Yeah, it's definitely kind of weird to imagine a triton with like almost like a dog-like snout or like a pig-like snout. Let's see, and how did you say? He can spit acid like mouth's acid arrow once a day? Or... Yeah, my bad. It says Mel's acid, acid acid arrow, but I swear the spell is mouth's acid arrow. And it's four uh, times a day. Four times a day, okay. Spit an acid. Yeah, it definitely is mouth's. With an F. Thank you all again for tuning in to Dice Never Lie. I have been DM Marathustra. I appreciate you listening to our recap session here. I hope you enjoyed what we had going on as we finished up this Tomb of the Rat God. I uh, hope you enjoy Tolis. Hope you enjoy the uh, world we've kind of got going on here for the Twin Star Marauders. And in the future, if you would like to join us as we transition into a homebrew setting in a new world, uh, we're looking to do a Session Zero this April. So please get a hold of us. Find us on Discord. Uh, do what you must to get a hold of Dice Never Lie. Look forward to seeing you in the future here. But otherwise, you all be well. Thank you again. Have a great night.